Good day everyone, I am Trisha May B. Zamora and together with my partner Dominic Ann Law, we will present to you Peplau's Theory of Interpersonal Relationship. Now, who is behind the theory of interpersonal relationship? Hildegard E. Peplau has been described as the mother of psychiatric nursing because her theoretical and clinical work led to the development of the distinct specialty field of psychiatric nursing. She was born on September 1, 1909 at Reading, Pennsylvania and peacefully died in her sleep at the age of 89 on March 7, 1999. She studied diligently and graduated from the Potsdam, Pennsylvania Hospital School of Nursing in 1931, eventually working as an operating room supervisor at Potsdam Hospital. She graduated from the Bennington College in Vermont with a Bachelor of Arts in Interpersonal Psychology in 1943. Her first book that was published in 1952, named Interpersonal Relations in Nursing, was one of the first to emphasize the importance of nurse-patient relationship in providing healthcare. The major concepts of the interpersonal theory are, first, the four phases of nurse-patient relationship, which are orientation, identification, exploitation, and resolution, which will be explained in a while. Another major concept are the primary and secondary nursing roles. Throughout the nurse-patient relationship, the nurse assumes a variety of roles that empower and equip him to satisfy the patient's goals. The nurse can effectively use these roles in a variety of nursing scenarios and phases of the interpersonal relationship. These functions may overlap and be observed as soon as the situation arises. Under the primary nursing roles are stranger, resource person, teacher, leader, surrogate, and counselor. Together with the four phases of nurse-patient relationship, each of the roles will be explained in a while. Now, under the six secondary nurse roles are technical expert, mediator, safety agent, researcher, tutor, and manager of the environment. The nurse-patient relationship, according to Peplau, is a four-phase phenomenon. It is a professional and planned relationship between the patient and the nurse. Research indicates that the relationship between the healthcare provider and the patient impacts healthcare outcomes. That means how you interact with your patients outside of simply providing medical care influences the recovery. The four phases of nurse-patient relationship can be viewed as distinct entities yet they may interact with one another during the nurse-patient encounter. Each step is distinct and has a notable influence on the nurse-patient interaction's outcome, starting with the orientation. Orientation is the first encounter between a nurse and a patient, in which the latter has a perceived need and expresses a desire for professional help. The nurse helps the patient recognize and comprehend his or her patient experience. The second phase, identification. It is when the patient and the nurse discuss the patient's experience and needs, resulting in a sense of connectedness. The nurse's role in the interaction is critical in assisting the patient in reorienting his feelings and maintaining a consistently positive environment. Third phase, exploitation. In this phase, the patient derives the full value of the relationship as he moves on from a dependent role to an independent role. The nurse sets new goals, but the authority is shifted to the patient because these goals must be met through personal or self-effort. Lastly, resolution. In the last stages, the patient gains independence over his care by gradually putting old goals aside and forming new ones. Even after the patient and the nurse have ended their relationship, it is clear that the experience has left a lasting impression on the patient because illness and accepting a dependent role it's a unique human experience. Nursing roles. First, role of the stranger. The nurse and the patient are complete strangers when they first meet. As the nurse gets to know the patient better, he must treat him with the utmost respect, which includes accepting him as a person and giving him due respect for his uniqueness. This role corresponds to the identification phase. Second, role of the resource person. The nurse provides precise answers to the patient's questions, including health facts, advice, 
the basic explanation of the healthcare team's course of care as the patient enters the dependent room. It is the nurse's obligation to adjust her responses in accordance with the patient's degree of understanding. Third, teaching role. As the interaction progresses, the nurse takes on a teaching role, emphasizing the need of self-care and assisting him in comprehending the therapeutic plan. In order to fulfill this duty, the nurse must first identify how the patient comprehends the topic at issue. He needs to focus his conversation on the patient's interest and his capacity to apply the information he has given. Fourth, leadership role. Despite being reliant on the healthcare team for his care, the patient is still considered vital in determining the course of his treatment. As a leader, the nurse must act in the patient's best interest while also allowing him to make decisions about his own care. Cooperation and active engagement are needed to achieve this. Fifth, surrogate role. Since the patient is reliant on the nurse over his care, the nurse serves as a surrogate. This provides an environment in which previous feelings, such as feelings towards her mother, might be felt. Despite this, the nurse must work with the patient to ensure that her surrogate position is distinct and only temporary. And sixth, counseling role. Papla believes that the counseling role in nursing is the most vital and important. The nurse's function as a listening friend, an understanding family member, and someone who delivers sound and strong advice strengthens a nurse-patient relationship. The patient's ability to retain and comprehend experience, as well as how it might be integrated into his daily life, is at the core of the interpersonal technique. Interpersonal theory, a nursing process. In assessment, there's continuous data collection and analysis. Also, there may not be a felt need. While in orientation, it is a non-continuous data collection, there is a felt need and definite needs. In nursing diagnosis and planning, setting goals is mutual, while in identification, it is an independent goal setting. In implementation, the plans are initiated towards achievement of mutually set goals and may be accomplished by patient, nurse, or significant other. While in exploitation, the patient is actively seeking and needing help and is patient initiated. In evaluation, it is based on mutually expected behaviors and may lead to termination initiation of new plans. While in resolution, it occurs after the other phases are completed successfully and leads to termination. Peplau's interpersonal relations theory and the nursing process are sequential and focuses on the therapeutic relationship by using problem-solving techniques for the nurse and patient to collaborate in order to meet the patient's needs. Both use observation, communication, and recording as basic tools utilized by nursing. The theory also allowed the client's needs to be assessed. The application of the theory helped to provide comprehensive care to the client. In short, the table shows that the assessment is equal to orientation phase, planning is equal to identification phase, implementation is equal to the exploitation phase, and evaluation is equal to resolution phase. And now for the assumptions of the theory. Hildegard Peplau's interpersonal relations theory assumptions are First, the nurse and the patient are able to interact with each other. It is believed that success can only be attained if all parties act together and move in the same direction to achieve the common purpose. Next is the maturation of nurse and patient. According to Peplau, both the patient and the nurse mature as a result of the therapeutic contact. This can be compared with the resolution phase in which the patient gains independence. Third, Peplo also believed that communication and interviewing skills remain relevant and as important as fundamental nursing tools, for this is mainly used to assess and to understand the patient better. And lastly, Peplo also believed that nurses must have a clear understanding of themselves first for them to further enhance their client's progress and avoid limiting their options to those that nurses value. Next are the important principles of Peplau's theory. According to Peplau, the kind of person that the nurse becomes makes a substantial difference in what each patient will learn as he or she receives nursing care. This is in connection with the nurse-patient relationship. Hildegard Peplau's interpersonal relations theory 
emphasize the nurse-client relationship as the foundation of nursing practice. It emphasized the give and take of nurse-client relationships that was seen by many as revolutionary. In nursing, this common goal provides the incentive for the therapeutic process in which the nurse and the patient respect each other as individuals, both of them learning and growing as a result of interaction. Now let's move on to the meta paradigm of the theory. First is the nursing. Pepla described nursing as a significant therapeutic interpersonal process that functions cooperatively with human processes that present health as a possible goal for individuals. Pepla also defined nursing as a human relationship between an individual who is sick or in need of health services and a nurse specially educated to recognize and respond to the need for help. When nurses together with the healthcare team offer health services, they project health holistically taking while considering the social economic, spiritual, emotional, and physical aspect of every person. When interacting with clients in every setting available, the nurses uses the interpersonal model as a way to explore and to identify the needs of the person seeking for professional help. Next, person. Peplow defines a person as a man who is an organism that lives in an unstable balance of a given system, who strives in his own way to reduce tension generated by needs. In short, Peplow described the person as an individual with a felt need. Next, health. Peplow considers health as a word that symbolizes movement of the personality and other ongoing human processes that directs the person towards creative, constructive, productive, and community living. Peplow also gave importance to the belief that for one's health to be achieved and maintained, his needs, it may be physiological demands and interpersonal conditions, must be met. And lastly, the environment. Peplow describes the environment as forces that exist outside of the organism and within the context of a socially acceptable way of life, from which fundamental human social processes such as norms, practices, and beliefs are produced. However, the interpersonal process is always present in these provided conditions that contribute to health. Next is Peplow's conceptual framework. Peplow went on to form an interpersonal model emphasizing the need for a partnership between the nurse and client as opposed to the client passively receiving treatment and the nurse passively acting out the doctor's orders. Her conceptual model is an overview of the major concepts in Peplow's theory of interpersonal relationship. Peplow also demonstrated how this model could be used as a process when she introduced the four phases of nurse-patient relationship. The different roles of the nurses added further understanding on how nurses could effectively use the interpersonal model by identifying which role is appropriate at a given phase or situation in perfect harmony with the nursing processes. For the last part of this report, acceptance by the nursing community. In practice, her ideas paved the way for integrating other specific disciplines into nursing especially in formulating the paradigm of psychiatric nursing in its early days. Some researchers who used her model in their studies found that those nurses who promote trust by remaining available at all times and being constant in their approach facilitates the movement of influence from the nurse to patient. And lastly, in psychiatric nursing, Peplow's interpersonal model is used in counseling women undergoing depression. In education, Hildegard Peplow's book entitled Interpersonal Relations in Nursing that was published in 1951 is being used as a manual of instruction to help graduate nurses and nursing students alike in creating a significant nurse-patient relationship in any setting they are into. Critics of her model were published in numerous academic circles. Some also specializes in psychiatric nursing. In research, researchers follow the major assumption that patient problems were within the prison phenomena and were dealt with inside the nurse-patient interaction studies. 
Now for the application of the theory. Petla believed that all nurses, regardless of their area or clinical setting, could effectively utilize her model. The theory can only be used in situations where communication can occur between the nurse and the patient. Therefore, the use of the model is limited or impossible in working with senile, comatose, or newborn patients. For in this given situation, the nurse-patient relationship is often one-sided. And utilizing the interpersonal model, the nurse in the role of a stranger moves in to explore the patient's feelings with care accompanied with respect and courtesy. And lastly, for the nurse to function as an educative, therapeutic, and maturing force, understanding the meaning of the experience to the patient is very important. And that ends our report about Paplau's theory of interpersonal relationships. Thank you so much for listening.